Hey everyone, welcome back to an Orthodox Cricket. Now another hugely important game in the Cricket World Cup last night. India played Bangladesh. Now for Bangladesh, this was their last chance to secure a semi-final position. And unfortunately for them, they fell short. So what this means is Bangladesh are out. And India are now the second team to qualify for the semi-finals along with Australia. So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to take a quick look at that game and just see how it played out. And then we're going to move on to something I'm hugely excited for, and that's England versus New Zealand tonight. Now, for England, this is a must-win game for them to push onto the semis. If they lose, they're out. On the other hand, New Zealand can still go through to the semi-finals if they lose. However, they can't afford to lose by too many because their position in the semi-final is going to rely on the Bangladesh-Pakistan game, and then it's all going to come back to run rate. Now, as we take a look at last night's game between India and Bangladesh, India won the toss and elected to bat. At the end of their 50 overs, they made 314 for 9, with Rohit Sharma top scoring with 104. Now that takes him to a total of 4 World Cup 100s. Now he's tied the record with Kumar Sangakkara from the 2015 World Cup for the most 100s in a single tournament. Kale Rahul finally came right. He scored 77. It was a little bit slow and he looked out of nick at the start, but he sort of came right, so that's a positive for India moving forward. And then Rishbar Pant looked a whole lot better than he did the other night, scoring 48. Now the best of the Bangladesh bowlers was the Fizz, picked up 5 for 59. And then Shakib bowled really tightly with 1 for 41 off his 10. Now in reply, Bangladesh got off to quite a good start. Tamman looked like he was about to find a bit of form. So did Sumi Shaka. And then Shakib also looked great. But in the end they fell short, so Bangladesh were 286 all out. With Shakib Al Hassan top scoring was 66. After Shakib and Mushfika fell, it sort of looked like all hope was lost. But then Sufadin came in and scored 51 not out, but he just didn't quite get the support he needed from the tail. Now, the pick of the Indian bowlers once again, Jaspreet Boomer, picked up 4 for 55, and he really just sold for me just how good he is. And for me, he is definitely the number one death bowler in the world. And through the middle order, Hardik Pandya picked up a nice 3 for 60. So as I said before, this result means Bangladesh are out and India have secured their semi-final spot. Quite a few positives from both teams there. India will be happy that Kale Rahul's found a bit of form along with Rishbhar Pant. And Bangladesh can be pretty happy with their tournament. And if they can find support for guys like Shakib in the future, they're going to be a real powerhouse come the 2023 World Cup. Now moving on to tonight's game, which I really can't wait for. So first of all, just looking at the team news. Now I think the English team is pretty solid. However, they do have a couple of decisions to make. I think Liam Plunkett secured a spot in the last game taking three wickets. I think he'll be very handy against the New Zealand batsmen. But for the England team, there's one real big decision, and that's Moeen Ali or Adil Rashid. Now Adil Rashid's played most of the tournament. And he's been a little bit average. I think we've all seen he's come back from that shoulder injury and he's really struggled a little bit. Mo and Ali, you never really know what you're going to get with him. But he is a bit of an X-factor player. He is one of those guys who could step up and take a few wickets or he could smoke a 50 or 60 at the end. So for me, I'd probably lean towards Mo and Ali. However, if the English team think they're secure enough in their batting, they may look to a more attacking option with the ball and Adil Rashid. Now just taking a look at the New Zealand team, they're pretty secure as well. There's just a couple of spots up for debate. The big one, Henry Nichols or Colin Munro at the top of the order. Now, I think it's pretty clear that they're going to stick with Nichols. Munro played the whole first half of the tournament and really struggled. And for New Zealand to give Nichols a run in the last game, I can't see them giving him one game and then pulling pin on that. So I think you'll see Nichols at the top with Guptill, but it's absolutely key him and Guptill put some runs on the board to set a foundation for that New Zealand order. Now the last position New Zealand will have to decide on is the last bowling spot. Now that's either going to be Ish Sodi, Matt Henry or Tim Southey. So for me, they're probably going to have to assess the pitch. If it looks like they're going to turn, they might play that second spinner with Sodi, but otherwise it's a battle between Matt Henry and Tim Southey. Now this is a tough one, Matt Henry's played most of the tournament, he's been there or thereabouts, but then you've also got Tim Southey there who's got a fantastic record against England and he does step up in the big game, so I don't know who I'd go for if it's turning potentially Sodi, uh, but I might lean towards giving Southey his first game of the tournament. Now as we take a look at each team's keys to victory, starting with England, I think it's hugely important that Johnny Bairstow 
and Jason Roy set that foundation once again for England. Now, they've been fantastic all tournament, and to get Jason Roy back for the last game really just showed what they'd been missing. So if these two can set the foundation and get that run rate going, it really puts the pressure on New Zealand knowing that they've got Morgan, Stokes and Butler to come in and try and finish as strongly as possible. So a lot of England's success is going to come down to their batting. They're such a strong batting unit. They've shown us the whole tournament and that is going to be one of their keys to victory. Now, hopefully as a New Zealand fan, the pitch does a little bit because we've seen on the pitches that aren't so flat, the English batsmen have struggled to adapt just a little bit. Now, moving on to the English team with the ball, they need Joffa Archer and Chris Wood to bowl with some absolute gas. Really unsettle the New Zealand batsmen and take some wickets at the top. Once they've got rid of the openers and they get into the likes of Kane Williamson and Ross Taylor, I think it's really important they go for the jugular then. Try and get them out early, and if they can't, really restrict them, tie them down, put that run rate pressure on them, and wait for them to make a mistake. We've seen throughout this whole tournament, both Williamson and Taylor have been a little bit slow to get started, but they can accelerate later in the order, so it's key to not let them get off to a flyer. So if England can put all of these things into place, setting that foundation, getting their big power hitters to close well, and then their opening bowlers to take some wickets, it's going to be such a hard task for New Zealand to overcome. Now as we take a look at New Zealand's key to victory, there's no doubt that this is going to be an absolutely mammoth task for New Zealand and that we have relied on a few players throughout this tournament. So for them to have any chance, everyone needs to step up and everyone needs to perform. So starting off, Martin Gaplil. I feel like he is due a massive score tonight. I feel like he's finally going to come through and I'm putting a lot of faith in him. Now, against England, he averages 51 with 200s and 550s. And playing in England, he averages 45. So we all know he's capable, he's done it before, and let's pray as a New Zealand fan that he can do it tonight. Now no surprises with this next one. New Zealand need Ross Taylor and Kane Williamson to score the majority of the runs. We all know how good they are. Probably New Zealand's two best ever ODI batsmen, and we need them to step up and do it in tonight's game. Now, Kane Williamson's been a little bit slow throughout this tournament, but that's probably because he's trying to rebuild after a top order collapse most of the time. So it is really key that the guys who haven't stepped up this World Cup tonight is their night. So we can't just rely on Williamson and Taylor. We also need the likes of Henry Nichols to step up. I know he's only played the one game, but he's there for a reason. So a few runs out of him would be great. Tom Latham, he's so good. He's done it before, but he's really struggled this whole World Cup. Nisham shown promise as well as De Grand Home. So if as a whole the whole batting unit can step up, that's going to take a lot of pressure off the likes of Williamson and Taylor. Now for me, one of the biggest ones is for lovely Trenchy to take a few wickets at the top. Now if he can get rid of the likes of Roy, Bearstow and Root early, it really puts the pressure on that English middle order to rebuild and doesn't let them to tee off from ball one. Now this whole World Cup, New Zealand's been a little bit underwhelming in the field, something we're not really used to. So tonight they need to take all their catches, any run out opportunities, and really spark something in the field. And just the last thing that's not on the board here, I think it's really important whether England play Adil Rashid or Moen Ali, that New Zealand attack them. The last couple of games have really sat on opposition spinners and let them get away with a good economy rate, and that's put the pressure on attacking the seam bowlers. Now, with England's bowling lineup, it's going to be hard to get away their seamers, so I think if we can take the pressure off by attacking the spinner, it's going to make the New Zealand batsmen's jobs a whole lot easier. But that's all for today, guys. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of the India-Bangladesh game. Also, what you think might happen in tonight's game between England and New Zealand. If you think I've missed out any keys to victory, let me know. But I'm super excited. I really hope, as a New Zealand fan, we can knock over the English qualify for the semis, and knock the English out. But thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow.